I'm Michael West, Technical Product Manager with VMware. The Tanzu Kubernetes Grid service for vSphere lets developers deploy Kubernetes clusters on demand. The TKG service makes use of the vSphere network service to enable networking within the cluster and to provide access to and from external networks. In part one, I showed the setup of the supervisor cluster networking. This video focuses on the Tanzu Kubernetes cluster networking. Each TK cluster is a set of controller and worker VMs attached to its own NSX network segment and front-ended by a load balancer. Let's deploy a cluster. This simple YAML contains the specification for the cluster. We're deploying a cluster with three controller and three worker nodes using Calico as the overlay networking within the cluster. The virtual machines are created, bootstrapped, and joined together to form a Kubernetes cluster. A quick look at NSX Manager shows the network topology. A T1 gateway and segment were created. The segment was assigned a slash 28 network from the pod CIDR defined when we created the supervisor cluster. The VMs are attached to the segment and get IPs from that range. Let's drill in from the previous slide to focus on TK cluster deployment. vSphere pods are still running directly on ESXi hosts and connected to the NSX banking segment. The supervisor cluster is running a set of controllers that implement a cluster API based deployment. We are focused on the networking elements of this deployment. The CAPW controller is the cluster API provider, and the virtual machine service controller implements the virtual machine lifecycle for the TK cluster nodes. As the virtual machines are being configured, CAPW creates a virtual network custom resource. NCP is watching for that resource and calls the NSX API to create a new segment and T1 router for the cluster. The VM service controller creates a virtual network interface resource for each VM, which NCP translates into the NSX virtual interfaces. The VM service controller then configures the VMs with these interfaces. Let's look at these custom resources. The virtual network custom resource is populated by NCP with information from NSX. We see an annotation with the egress CIDR range defined at supervisor deployment, the slash 28 network assigned from the pod CIDR and the SNAT IP from the egress CIDR are also here. The cluster node VMs will get IPs from this network. The virtual machine service controller creates a virtual machine interface custom resource for each VM in the cluster, and NCP will translate that into NSX virtual interfaces. Finally, the VM service controller configures the virtual NIC and MAC address for each of the VMs. Back to NSX Manager, and we see that the reconciliation of the virtual network resource results in a new T1 gateway and segment for the cluster. The NSX virtual interfaces were also created. We need ingress into our cluster through a load balancer. CAPW creates the virtual machine service VM service controller translates that into a load balancer CRD and a Kubernetes load balancer service. NCP translates the load balancer resource into an NSX load balancer and the Kubernetes service into NSX virtual servers with the endpoints entered into a server pool for the virtual server. The virtual server gets an IP address from the ingress CIDR defined at supervisor cluster deployment. The virtual machine service holds configuration needed by the VM service controller to create the load balancer custom resource and the Kubernetes load balancer service for the cluster.
the load balancer resource is translated by NCP into an NSX load balancer. The Kubernetes load balancer service is translated into the NSX virtual servers and endpoints. The endpoints are the IP addresses of the cluster control plane nodes. An ingress IP is also assigned to the virtual server. From NSX Manager, our new load balancer. I select the virtual server and see the ingress IP and port used to access the cluster. Drilling into the server pool shows that load balancer traffic will be distributed across the three control plane nodes in the cluster. Overlay networking within the TK cluster nodes is architected to support multiple CNI providers. The first one is Calico. The Calico agent runs on every cluster node and has two primary components. Felix handles plumbing routes into the Linux kernel, and Bird implements BGP to advertise routes to other nodes in the cluster. Calico encapsulates packets and routes through the Tunnel Zero interface for non-local traffic. Each node is assigned IP subnets from the pod CIDR block defined in the cluster create YAML. DevOps can deploy pods onto the TK cluster. When pods are created, they get an IP from the assigned IP subnet for that node. Calico CNI creates the Kali virtual interface and assigns the IP. Traffic between pods on different nodes will be routed through that interface to tunnel zero where the packet will be encapsulated with a new header containing the destination address of the node the pod is on. When a load balancer Kubernetes service is created in a TK cluster, the TK cloud provider creates a virtual machine service in the supervisor cluster. Because users have admin access on the TK cluster, we want to avoid storing any credentials for vCenter or NSX in the cluster. So we proxy that responsibility to the supervisor cluster. The supervisor cluster then goes through the process we saw before and creates a Kubernetes load balancer service. NCP reconciles that into a new NSX virtual server with TK cluster worker nodes as the members of the server pool. The virtual server gets a new ingress IP. I'm going to create a deployment and a load balancer service. I have three Nginx pods and a load balancer with ingress IP. Let's see what Calico is doing. Here are the nodes in our cluster. One control plane node and one worker node are shown in the windows below. These are the pods we just deployed, one on each of the worker nodes. From the control plane node, we can see that Calico has allocated a slash 26 block for each of the nodes in the cluster. Our Nginx pods got their IPs from the block associated with the node they are on. Now from our worker node, we will look at the routing table. Four pods are running on this node, three system pods we did not show in the command above, and our Nginx pod. Each pod is attached to a virtual interface. Routes are broken out for each IP block assigned to the host in order to route traffic to that host through the Tunnel Zero interface. If the Nginx pod needs to talk to a pod with an IP in this range, it will be routed to this node through the Tunnel Zero interface. The packet is encapsulated at that interface with an IP of the destination host. Calico provides layer three routing all the way to the destination pod with no NAT. And finally, we go back to NSX Manager and see that NCP has created a new virtual server for the Nginx load balancer service. The member pool contains the worker nodes of the cluster and the assigned node port for that service.